You're in good hands today because I'm continuing with my daily five series and I'm going to teach you all about read to friend, sometimes called read to someone. Hi, I'm Molly, and if we haven't met before, I'm a fifth grade teacher who's also taught kindergarten and first grade, and I help you learn how to use the Daily Five, make it easier on your life so that you can get to all your reading groups in your elementary classroom. And I have some experience with Read to Friend. I believe the Daily Five book calls it Read to Someone, but I like Read to Friend. It sounds friendlier. When I taught kindergarten and first grade together, my class always did read to friend and it worked out perfectly because usually the first grader was more of the role model and they could read to the kindergartner. When I switched to just kindergarten in a title school, I stopped doing read to friend because most of my students didn't know how to read and it seemed chaotic to me. But I'm gonna go through the steps today to show you how to set up read to friend so it can be one of the stations you do in your classroom because I do think it can work really well and some teachers really like it and that might be you. The first thing you're going to do like every daily five station when your students are learning how to do this whenever you set it up during the school year could be the beginning of the year could be after winter break in January. The first thing you're going to do is set up expectations. So it's going to be read the whole time stay in one spot. A lot of times teachers will say elbow, elbow, knee to knee so that you are sitting side by side your read to friend partner. You're going to have a level one voice. This is different than the rest of daily five because they have to be able to hear you reading, but it's more of a whisper read and you're going to get started right away and work on building your reading stamina. So the expectations are almost the same except your voice level and then who you're sitting by. I think daily five read to someone read to friend does work really well. If you explicitly teach what it should look like, you have students model it and you show them what your expectations are. And if they aren't following through with those expectations, then you're not getting to do read to friend. And that's the consequence for it. So once you've taught them all the expectations, you need to use the stamina building chart or some way to keep track of it in your own classroom. I like using a chart because it shows the kids their progress and you can grab the one I use in my TPT shop. I'll leave a link below for you or you can make your own. It looks like a bar graph once you get to the 15 minute mark and you really want to get to that before you move on. So everybody should be practicing read to friend at the same time and building their stamina together. Okay, next. We already talked about explicitly showing how to do it, but if students are not following through with what expectations you set forward, you do need to have a plan for that. So I do recommend saying, if you aren't doing read to friend properly, then this will happen. And likely you're just gonna have them read to self and tell them to separate. It's not a big deal. They get the choice taken away from them. If they're repeatedly doing it, then you might have to say, you need a break from read to someone read to friend for a while. So. If you are wanting to try read to friend, I think it can be a really great choice. It just depends on the vibe that you have in your classroom. If you have a really chatty class and they're struggling building their stamina, I'd wait to introduce it for a while. But again, if you're showing the expectations and following through with consequences on children not knowing what they're supposed to be doing, then I think you have it set up and you're good to go. So just remember that we're gonna set those expectations, we're gonna model them, show how we are building our stamina to get to that 15 minute mark and just following through on those consequences again. So if you have kids that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing, move them away from each other. And the reason I repeat that is because I do get a lot of messages on TikTok and Instagram and those people will say they want to do this choice, but their students are too chatty. So then when I start asking them a series of questions, well, have you tried this? Have you tried that? And they're like, oh no, that's a really great suggestion. So just know read to friend can work really well for you in your classroom. And if you have anybody that you talk to on a regular basis that is like, okay, I want to try daily five, but I don't know where to begin. I would love it if you would share my daily five playlist with them because I have so many videos to help you get started. And if you're just watching this video for the first time, go back and watch all the other daily five videos in this series that I launched just this fall. And remember, if you want to take your daily five class to the next level, I have a workshop that you can sign up for and watch right away. I hosted it over the summer, but you can catch the replay and I'll leave it in the description box below. Thanks so much for being here and I'll see you next time.